welcome friends to this afternoon session our monthly meeting i hope you enjoyed your lunch break it was a nice lunch any suggestions for improvement you can uh, tell uh, the president of isha if you didn't like it tell them tell the outside people <laughs> thank you very much for enjoying your break i was talking to you in the morning about our goals of reaching a true home achievable while we are in a human body that's a very big thing that in a human body sitting so far away from the level of consciousness required to know that and then still be able to get through all that within the body and without actually dying die while living to be able to withdraw attention right to the core of our own self our soul and then on to the totality from where the soul is arising it's a big opportunity it's a very good talk but how is it practical we are living in a world of reality we don't see anything else even with knowledge of all this we still have to live in this reality there was a mystic in india named shankar one day he was walking with his disciples and he asked his disciple favorite disciple a realized one a enlightened one he said disciple what do you see on the road disciple said it's a piece of rope but looks like a snake he said if it looks like a snake you wouldn't be touching it if it's a rope you can pick it up what do you, what is it now he said it's a rope that looks like a snake he said pick it up then so the disciple picked up the snake the snake wound round him and bit him he said ouch then shankar said now tell me is it a snake or is it a rope it is a rope that looks like a snake then why did you say ouch it bites like a snake also <laughs> therefore we are living in a reality which is the only reality for us and there in the midst of this reality when all these things are really affecting us how far can we go in our spiritual development that's where a question comes up of how to balance your spiritual journey with your external work basic principles are very simple external destiny will go on whether you like it or not events will happen whether you like them or not they are predestined you can try to avoid them they still happen people have tried to avoid events of life they still happen even with knowledge they will still happen they don't change because it is designed you designed it like that is it's like a film playing the film won't change just because you say i don't like that scene i tell the story of a villager in india rustic guy living in a village never seen a movie and his friends brought him to the city and he saw a movie in that movie there is a scene where a girl comes to have a bath in a pond and she takes off her clothes to jump into the pond and before she gets nude a train passes in front and by the time the train goes the woman is in the water already so he misses the chance of looking at that nude body he went 20 times to the movie <laughs> hoping one day the train will be late that's how we live our life maybe it can change maybe something can happen it doesn't therefore if we have, if we have knowledge of this thing then we accept they say that acceptance is a very important part in spirituality it is acceptance means you realize what is is i remember doing a course once called est e s t as a also in french means is and the whole theme of this training was what is is what ought to be is a mental thought you can keep on saying it ought to be like that it ought to be like that we are all great wise people in real sight afterward we can say oh it could have been like this we could have done differently if you go back you would have done the same thing again therefore it's not necessary to be always wanting to change things we should accept now acceptance is not easy because it's an ups and downs you're willing to accept the good things but not willing to accept the not so good things 
the nature of time is such that when good things happen, time passes quickly. When bad things happen, time passes slowly. In fact, Oscar Wilde, in his essay on one of the essays on suffering, he says, suffering is one long moment. When a moment stretches out, you are suffering. If you are happy, it will just pass. An hour will pass. And we want to make our journey to our true home a pleasurable one. And not suffering. People make it suffering. Oh, I have to do two and a half hours of meditation. And after five minutes, the body starts aching. Be restless. Same body, you are sitting in the same position, chatting with your friends for an hour will not ache. And you start meditation, it starts aching. And then we say, no, we have to do it. I see, I had a friend who invited me for meditation with him in San Francisco. And after a long time, I had gone from India to San Francisco, so I was tired, but he, to keep up my faces, I okay. He put the alarm for three o'clock in the morning. We're chatting till 12 o'clock. So after three hours sleep, we woke up. I was interested in seeing how he meditates. He put up a very nice position, lotus position, and then he closed his eyes. And I was not really truly meditating. Maybe I was too tired. But I was curious. So from time to time, I would open my right eye and see what he was doing. I don't know whether it was coincidence or why the timing was such. Every time I opened my eyes, he was doing like this, looking at the watch. To make two and a half hours complete. And I said, what a struggle this man is having. After two and a half hours of torture, he opened his eyes. What a nice meditation we had. I said, yes, a good meditation. It was not on the third eye center, it was on your watch. That's the only difference. It's no use to have meditation like that. Meditation should be so enjoyable that you go forward, feel like going in and see what's going on. And I tell you, I've done these meditation workshops. I've just come from an intensive meditation Work, workshop we did recently. People enjoy it when there is something to enjoy. And I found the secret is if you have a conversation with your beloved in meditation, you enjoy it. Otherwise, it's a torture. If you close your eyes, whether you are doing repetition of words, whether you're listening to the sound, whether you're trying to settle yourself in the third eye center, if there is a companionship of your beloved inside, you can chat and spend time there, express your love and devotion there, it becomes very pleasant. This, this part is missing in most people's meditation. So if you meditate by enjoyment and don't look at the watch, look at the quality of meditation, not the time spent on it. I have said five minutes of high quality meditation is better than five hours Mechanical meditation with no progress at all inside. So look at the quality, which is how much you can enjoy being within your own inner self. So that happens only when you can experience this love. And if you have already experienced the true love of a master outside, perfect living master, that becomes very easy. Because it becomes easy to visualize, it's easy to draw the memory in, memory of your master. And then that is a surprising thing. The memory of a person you met suddenly becomes alive in meditation and becomes like a real new conversation, not only what you remember. So that makes meditation interesting. But if you can make meditation interesting and accept things as they are and think that things have to happen that way, you create a balance between your spiritual journey and the life outside. Do your duty. Oh, so many duties. They say that karma, which is means the reaction from past lives, past actions, and dharma is a response to that. Karma and dharma go together. It's our dharma to fulfill our karma. That means we should treat every event that happens. You say if somebody cheats you, I had to pay back that. My dharma is to forgive him. Or, I have to do a certain job, 
my dharma and do the job because maybe I didn't complete it. If you take it as a response and a duty, you have to raise your children as a duty. Be very good parents. Raise them. You are working in an office, work very diligently. That's your duty and period. Don't connect it with what, what you are getting out of it. Get everything, get the results from inside and do your duty outside. If you find the duty is too difficult, it's so difficult for me to do these things. And if you are initiated by a perfect living master, you can do another shortcut. Let master do it. Why do you want to do it? Put the master as the doer in, your, in yourself. Imagine he is actually doing, making you move to do what he is doing. The thoughts will be on the master and you will be doing more efficiently than if you try to do it better. There's a great balance you can create in your life. People who have been very successful in meditation did not run away to the forests to meditate. They meditated while they were doing their worldly work with equal success on both sides. So this balance is needed while we are here. Otherwise it remains all talk, intellectual talk to talk about higher levels of consciousness and so on, get nothing. You have to balance the other ways to treat everything you do as part of meditation. Every action can be made into meditation by associating it with your master doing it. It becomes meditation. Because when you're doing it, you're thinking of the master. You're meditating on the master. And that is why it can be made into a meditation. So these are just some of the ideas we have picked up from practices, from people who are practicing them. And we find that you can have a very good balance between your actual progress in meditation and your actual duty that you will do according to your karmic pattern that you come up with. We all have, we all have package we carry because of our karma. It's a load upon us. It's a load upon our mind. And when we pay off the load, we often create more load by reacting to it. If something happens in your life and you say it's over, it's over. If you say, now I'm not going to forgive that person who did this to me, you create a reaction and a new karma. You can make your life easier by doing what they call forgive and forget. Now forgiving is difficult, forgetting is even more difficult. People try to forgive, they say, I've forgiven you. But there's so much anger against that person still. That's not real forgiveness. Forgiveness means it's over. They say in our, uh, one guy wrote that in our Indian philosophy, the basic principle is, these are five, five, four principles of basic principles, that whatever is to happen will happen no matter. Every person you meet, you meet for a certain reason. It's not just chance. There's a reason why you meet every person and some persons stay with you longer, some stay shorter. When that purpose has been done, they go away. You should not miss them. It's over. And the third thing is, big principle is, what is over is over. Don't live in the past. Don't constantly remember, oh, this happened and this was good, this was bad. No, live in the future. Live, look forward to good things. And also, uh, fantasize about the good things that can happen. There is a book Somebody gave me, he said, it says, secret. The secret is that we have in our minds the power of the law of attraction. So whatever we think in our mind, we attract that. So when we are depressed and thinking of sad things, sad things happen to us. And when we are very happy and cheerful, then cheerful things happen to us. The guy who wrote that book, they said, if you are convinced in your mind you're going to make a million dollars and you believe in it, you'll make it. I haven't seen many people reading the book making million dollars, but the writers of the book did make them. Because they made them because they said we were convinced this idea of the secret will make a million dollars. They published the book and they made million dollars. They were convinced of it to start with. They were not saying, maybe it will make million dollars. One guy, he said he has a secret now, 
before the secret book was published, he knew the secret earlier. He put a small ad in the paper. Very small. Two, three lines ad. Cheap ad. In the papers, he said, send me one dollar, I will tell you the secret of becoming a millionaire. Simple ad. So, a lot of people sent a dollar to him. He became a millionaire. He then sent them the secret. The secret is, put an ad in the paper saying, if you send one dollar, you will become a millionaire. So, people have the, our desires and things are so much in this area. If we go follow these pursuits like this, we just create unnecessary karma. But if you believe in something, I can tell you it will happen. If you have faith and belief, you'll get it. Other thing is, when we <coughs> want something, and we all have desires to get things in life, this is our human life. Should we beg from people or should we beg from the Lord? There was a, and there was a man who said, I'm going to go to the king to get something. By the time he went to the king's darbar, he saw the king inside praying. The king is a beggar himself. If he's getting everything from where he's praying, why can't I get it from there? So he walked away. Prayed to the Lord to get everything. Everything you want, everything, no exception, that you want, if with faith that you will get it, you can get it from within yourself. In this life, I am making a statement that if everything is predetermined, how can you pray and get something like this? Am I not uh, contradicting my own earlier statement? No. If you pray and this, get something, that's part of what is written. And that's why you're doing it. We think we are making a change. There's no change. The change is also pre-written. So therefore, if you get a feeling of a free will type that we want to pray to get something, pray inside. And if you have faith you will get it, you will get it. It's as simple as that. My favorite Indian shepherds from the Guru Granth Sahib is Jo Mange Thakur Apnete Soi Soi Dete. And I find it's true. Instead of being beggars outside, be beggar inside. Whatever you want, you will get it from inside. It's a great way to live that way. And there will be a balance between your external strong work, very, very excellently done, with full skill, you're doing your work, at the same time you're making progress inside. One other little note. In this meditational program that we have, and I like all, everybody to meditate upon this self-insight, and the Master helps us meditate inside. You meditate inside, you start getting results. You see visions, you see past lives, you can see faces of people you have never seen. All kinds of experiences happen. You fly, you can see other galaxies, some people see. Within this world, you can have so much exploration, it becomes very interesting. And one likes to meditate when he, those experiences start. If those things happen to you, digest them. Don't share them. People have a tendency to quickly go and say, I saw something today. And then it stops. It never comes. Then they say, why did it stop? I was sharing something good with my friends. It stops because unknowingly, when we share something, we are putting an act of ego. I got it. And that ego becomes a wall and doesn't allow you to grow anymore. So that is why it's a simple tip for those who are having good experiences in meditation. Digest them, you'll get more. And you'll build up more. So these are some simple things that have actually worked in life and I'm sharing them um, with you to apply in your own lives. Today, we are giving Prashad and as the number of people in various of our programs are growing, it uh, makes it difficult to give the Prashad personally like I've been doing so far. So in the smaller meetings, we will suspend this practice. In the larger meetings, we will give prashad in, a, in an orderly way where it can be delivered to everybody. Uh, right now, I want to conclude this meeting at this point so that there is time to distribute prashad, which I see the basket over there. So, Jonathan, you are ready? I'm ready. Okay, thank you very much for coming here and we will be having prashad and the meeting will end and there are few people who have asked for personal time.
I'll see you.